I call the meeting to order and welcome everybody to the uh, Planning Commission meeting. And is there any uh, changes to our agenda? No, sir. There are no agenda changes. Okay. Uh, if the commissioners would, uh, Kelly's having a little bit of trouble hearing who makes a motion and a second. So when we make a motion or a second, if you just kind of raise your hand or be sure to turn your mic on. And uh, so is there a motion to adopt the agenda? He raised his hand. Is there a second? Second. Okay, got a motion second to adopt the agenda. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Need approval of the minutes from February the 9th, 2012 meeting or any corrections or additions? Move approval of the minutes. Okay. Second. second. I'm sorry, we got to stop this. Just don't be so animated here. Got a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are now official. Uh, council members in the audience. Uh, buddy? Councilman Buddy Baker, I'm uh, here on uh, number four on the agenda. You want to speak now or would you rather wait? <laughs> got a map if you'll unroll it. No. <laughs> yes, this, uh, I'm Councilman Buddy Baker, uh, District 20. Uh, this uh, property on Osceola Avenue, uh, I haven't had any calls either for or against this property being rezoned. Uh, Mr. Carl Dreyfus is here today. Uh, he's talked to a lot of the neighbors out there, and I think y'all have a letter to that effect. And he also has maps, uh, the ones that he talked to. And uh, I can't understand why this property wasn't rezoned back when the other properties were rezoned commercial from Charlotte down to Sprint, the alleyway right there at Sprint's. Uh, I, it should have been rezoned commercial all the way through to uh, Burgess, I thought, but uh, nevertheless, it wasn't. So I'm here to speak in favor of getting this rezoned. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other councilmen? And any items to be deferred or withdrawn? No items on the deferral or withdrawal agenda. Okay. Any items on consent? Yes, sir, we have a, a few. Uh, just for information uh, for our audience, if you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you can appeal the decision by petitioning for writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner, and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. Then we'll move to the consent agenda. Notice, uh, please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or a member of the commission requests the item to be removed from the consent agenda. So these are the items on your proposed consent agenda today. Um, beginning on page three with item number one, uh, this is the major and collector street plan amendment. It's a request to amend your adopted major and collector street plan uh, designations as outlined in the staff report for various areas in Davidson County. And staff recommendation is to approve. On page five, excuse me, page four, item number three. This is Rolling Mill Hill, the district building. This is a periodic review of an approved specific plan district known as Rolling Mill Hill District Building. For, it's for a portion of property located within the Rutledge Hill Redevelopment District and approved for construction of this building with no maximum height at the property line. Staff recommends approval uh, that you, excuse me, staff recommends that the commission find that the SP district is inactive and direct staff to prepare a report to the council to continue the implementation of the development plan as adopted and that no rezoning is recommended on this property. On page five, item number five, this is a request to rezone from the R6 district to the RM20A district for properties located at 1628 and 1630 
6th Avenue North, staff recommends approval. Item number six, Brentwood Branch Estates. It's a request to permit the extension of an approved concept plan for one year for the Brentwood Branch Estates subdivision for eight single family clustered lots at 501 Broadwell Drive. And staff recommends approval of the extension of the concept plan to March 27th, 2013. And item number seven, this is under other business. It's a request for an open space dedication agreement between Summerfield Development LLC and Metropolitan Government for a portion of property on Ashford Trace to allow a portion of the Cane Ridge Elementary School property to be counted towards future open space requirements of the Trees, Tree Haven subdivision phase five when the final plat is approved and recorded. And that's the end of the consent agenda. Staff has um, asked that items one, three, five, six, and seven be uh, considered on consent. There's a motion to do that. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Those items are now officially approved on consent. The members of the audience, items two, which is a non conforming billboard. Uh, and item four, which is uh, four parcels rezoning on Osceola, the only items that will be on the public hearing for today. So we will now take item number two. Let me ask a question. There's, uh, Councilman Claiborne, there's uh, some emails that come in, I think, from Metro Attorney and from you concerning some of the bills before the state legislature. Uh, if those are passed, would that negate what we're doing here today? I think uh, I think so. Uh, the the one that has to do with signage specifically um, transfers all of the rights under state law to all on-premise signs. Now that's you know. Actually, actually Rick, those, can you, uh, the billboards already have those um, those uh, uh, pr protections already apply to billboards, and they would be extended to all signs. So right. um, it doesn't really change this text amendment in, in terms of what's nonconforming and what's not nonconforming. I just wonder if we were premature. What uh, you keep up the legislation? When when do they plan to adjourn? Uh, they plan to adjourn on April 29th. That's what the comptroller told me. I don't know how he knows that. <laughs> We're hoping it's April. But uh, I don't think we can, I think we should probably go on since it's here. That, it's speculative as to whether those will pass. And I do think it could have an impact, but uh, we should probably go ahead. And okay. Deal with. Question okay, go ahead, Brenda. This is item two on your agenda. And it's a text amendment to require that the Board of Zoning Appeals determine if a conversion of a legally non-conforming static billboard to a tri-face billboard would result in a greater negative impact on the adjacent properties. Originally, this was a text amendment that would have pro prohibited the conversion of any non-conforming static billboard to a tri-face billboard. Um, that text amendment was discussed at your November meeting and again in a work session in January. But it was not the intent of the sponsor of the bill to prohibit the conversion, but to add a public process to the conversion. And so that text amendment was withdrawn and replaced with this one. <coughs> Currently, the code makes no distinction between a tri-face billboard and a static billboard, but there are additional regulations in place for digital billboards. At one time, the tri-face billboards were included with those digital billboards, but they were removed from those regulations in January of 2011. A uh, tri-face billboard is defined as a non-internally illuminated billboard consisting of a sign face comprised of a series of vertical triangular louvers that can be rotated to show up to three separate sign messages. <coughs> and there's an example of a tri-face billboard there. Billboards are considered use, and the zoning code defines a non-conforming use in the following way. Non-conforming use means a use originally legally established, but which now does not currently conform to the applicable use regulations of the zoning district in which it is located. There are many reasons why a billboard was legally installed, um, but changes in the zoning code have made them non-conforming. Uh, the distance between billboards was increased. Um, billboards are now required to be on a single pole. 
They need to be located on streets that are at least four lanes in width, and bulk standards were amended. Um, alternatively, a change in circumstance might make the billboard non-conforming. For example, if it was the setback for a billboard is 20 feet from the right-of-way, and if the right-of-way was widened, then the billboard would no longer meet that setback requirement. Here's two examples of billboards, a non-conforming one and a conforming one. You'll see the one on the left is on four poles and it's on a three-lane road and the other one is on a single pole and it's actually oriented toward the highway. Currently, any non-conforming static billboard in the county could be replaced with a tri-face billboard. With this text amendment, certain requests for conversions would require determination by the BZA that the conversion of the billboard would not result in a negative impact on the adjacent property, uh, property owners. This uh, uh, text amendment would impact a number of non-conforming uh, static billboards, but not all. There are some that would not be impacted um, because it, and it would depend on the type of conformity, non-conformity of the billboard. Um, as we just discussed, state law gives added protection to billboards that are non-conforming. And if it's non-conforming only because they do not meet the bulk standards, then for purposes of this text amendment, they're actually considered conforming. Any new billboard would have to meet the bulk standards, but an existing billboard that doesn't meet bulk standards is considered conforming under state law, and they would only need to go and get a permit to convert to a uh, tri-face billboard. Uh, so if a billboard is a non-conforming because it doesn't meet separation requirements, it's located on a road less than four lanes wide and is on multiple poles, then it would need to go to the BZA. And there's one exception to that. If the billboard happens to be multi-poled and it is um, on a state highway and it's governed by a different set of regulations, and it means that, that those regulations say that a billboard, a like billboard needs to be replaced by a like one. So a four-poled billboard would have to be replaced by a four-poled billboard. So those particular billboards are not considered non-conforming. So if the reason that they are uh, considered the non-conforming is because they're on a multi-pole, but they're not on a four-lane street, they're on at least a four-lane street and they meet the distance requirements, then for these particular billboards, they would only need to get a permit. They wouldn't need to go to the BZA. It's very confusing. Here's a picture of a tri-phase billboard, and staff is recommending approval of this text amendment. Okay. This item is open for public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in uh, support? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition, please come state your name. You'll be allowed two minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Rush. I'm the real estate manager for Lamar Advertising here in, in uh, Nashville. Um, we've been in business here for about 50 years. We've been deploying tri visions for 20, 25 of those years with no problems. Uh, we've had the blessings of codes, and all of a sudden this come up. So we're opposing the adoption of this bill as it's written. As it, to us, it's a clear violation of 137208, Tennessee uh, Code Annotated. It's the non conforming use statute. It allows us to expand our business, demolish them, and reconstruct them. By deploying these tri-visions, all we're doing is expanding our business to give us the capability of having three messages on a structure. Change of space is just, that's all it is. It's changing the face panels, no change in the structure, no change in the use. It's still a billboard. There's been several cases statewide, and, and I'm also the executive director of the Outdoor Advertising Association of Tennessee, so I'm familiar with cases from one end of the state to the other that back up our position. And, and the Court of Appeals, in a case up in Johnson City, specifically ruled we could add additional facings to structures. <laughs> we do not understand the rationale for, for this legislation. Uh, it's, un it's unclear to us. It's confusing at best. And uh, asking the BZA to determine that the conversion will not result in a greater negative impact on adjacent properties is subjective at best. Uh, we just don't understand where this is coming from, and uh, we'd appreciate you disapproving this as written. And I'll be happy to answer any questions at any time if it's appropriate, if you have them. Thank you for your time. Anyone else wishing to speak? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So move. Motion second, close the public hearing. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, one question. One of the emails, uh, Fleck made reference, and I don't know whether this came from staff or from someone outside, 
that made reference to a uh, state statue that had been tried in Johnson City, and this is, is this? This this case, right. It, it was referenced to this, correct. But is this not parallel to that? What would be the difference if we're proving this? Well, without having that case right here in front of me and being able to recite it, uh, it'd be a little difficult for me to tell you right now. But I will say this. Uh, I don't think that this ordinance as written violates the uh, grandfathering protections that are afforded in 137208. The protections that, uh, that they're speaking of is that we can't change the, um, the zoning regulations for where a billboard can be, and if the billboard already exists, then make them take that billboard down. Um, and then there are also additional protections for billboards as far as how they can expand. The state statute goes into detail about what kind of billboards can go up, how large they can expand to, depending on what size they are at, at the beginning of their nonconformity. Um, and so the state already has those types of regulations, but the state the statutes are silent as to trifold billboards. Uh, it doesn't say that they can convert from a uh, single face or a, a two face um, standard billboard to a trifold. Uh, it just doesn't make that distinction. And so my understanding of what this, this ordinance would do is that it would require that if, uh, if an applicant wants to change their billboard face from a single panel billboard to a trifold, that they'd simply have to come before the BZA and show that it doesn't have some, um, and I've forgotten the exact language, but um, let's see here. Okay. That it won't result in a greater negative impact to the adjacent property. Now, uh, what that might be is a different story. I mean, I can, I can come up very quickly with a, a way where that might be a problem. If you had a series of three billboards in a row uh, along Lebanon Road, Murfreesboro Road, wherever, and you allowed all, th and all three of them by right were able to change the trifold billboards, and they're all switching at different times, that could be a distraction for motorists. I don't think many people would disagree with that. Um, so a lot of times when we have our distance restrictions about how close billboards can be to each other, and certainly the state has those sort of restrictions when it comes to digital billboards, the same concerns, I think, would arise if you have billboards that are completely unregulated as to how close these type of trifold billboards that change faces periodically can be. So I think there's a justification for why we would want to enforce it the way that this is written. Um, but I also will tell you that there, there are no case laws. There is no case law that's directly on point with this issue. The courts haven't addressed the regulation of trifold billboards um, in the manner that we're seeking to do it. Greg. Um, in trying to, uh, I've um, been familiar with some of this and it gets complicated quickly and, and I, I appreciate you recognizing that. Um, in trying to wrap my head around it, you know, I think it's really a, um, a question of when you change the face, um, does that change the use? And does that use, does that change in use um, have an impact on the community? Number, number one, I don't think that it changes the use. There might be a few instances where it could have a, an impact on the community. Um, but I think, you know, it, it seems like without a change of use, um, and you're adding messages to it um, that silently twist what kind of impact does that have on the community? I don't know if silently twisting, other than distracting the driver, if they're in maybe many little cases, limited cases, um, I, I just don't see the need for it. So um, I'm going to vote against it because I think that the impact is, is not there. And I think that the, it doesn't change the use. 
Um, and that's where I'm at. Derek? Stuart? Well, I'm, uh, as a matter of process, we do have a letter as, that sort of summarized before we got here the, the comments of the, the uh, person from Lamar, um, which very specifically mentioned that case. And uh, so I'm, I would like to think that we would have a <laughs> response to what that case said, <laughs> but it might not have gotten to you. Um, because I do think it's something we don't deal with a lot. Um, I, I know our, our convention, our, our general thought about what a, what a non-conforming use is. If it's if it's the same shape, if it doesn't expand, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't feel like. Uh, uh, there's a part of me that doesn't see the rationale for this, but I'm I'm, I'm a little bit at a loss because I, I was planning to hear an explanation of why that case either did or didn't control. I know we're not all lawyers, but it, it seems relevant. <clears throat> I'm going to think about this for a while. Judy? No comment. Bill? If, a applicant take, if an applicant takes their request to the BZA, are they having to pay for that process? There is a fee associated with it. Um, I don't know the exact number of the fee, but I, I believe it's around $250, $260. Um, I think that was what Joey told me it was. Does okay. It and do you, you have any idea, uh, Brenda, how long it would take to do all this extra processing through the BZA? I, I don't think it's that long. You make your application to the BZA, you get on the, the BZA um, uh, schedule. You, there is notices that would have to be done and signs posted as well as part of that. And I don't know, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the schedule for the BZA. Okay, well, anyway, I just, I have a little problem with maybe slowing down and the fact it's gonna cost them something to do and I imagine most of the cases would be approved. Uh, anyway, uh, Greg brought up something. I, I really was trying to figure out when you're talking about use because the signs, basically the use is advertising. Most of the time it's something to sell, but are you talking about the fact that it may be trying to convert you in your thinking? Is that the one you're saying use? Is that what you're talking about? Well, uh, Commissioner, I think what I'm referring to is that it doesn't change use. Um, in terms of it's still advertising, It, um, I think impact is what I'm talking about. The use stays the same just by twisting of words. And um, it, it doesn't, I think that you vest in rights with a billboard, and um, you have those rights until you change the use of it. And that's what I was referring to. And I don't think that there's an impact or change of use, which means um, that's that's what I was referring to when okay, I say well, use. In my mind, I was trying to picture this. And I, if there's a picture of an automobile up there, you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to sell your car. But if there's some message up there that says, you come join our church. Isn't that a change in use? Well, well I, advertising is, is advertising. A billboard is a billboard. Unless it's like, say, for instance, I think that in the code it defines a change of use. Now, I may be wrong. I'm speaking. I may have to ask Doug this. Um, but when you change from a... Uh, single panel billboard to a, say, digital billboard, mm -hmm. I think that's almost defined as a change in use. And there's different regulations that r regulate that. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that a single pane billboard has the same use with no other impact. So why are we making an additional regulation on that particular company that owns it when there's no change in use, there's no impact change that's my argument uh, we say change use but that that's uh irrespective of the fact that you've got three messages instead of one that doesn't matter i i would say i would argue that um that's correct i mean the impact is changing from one sign and twisting of poles and it's advertising is still advertising, even though you're increasing okay. the amount of messages that well, are Well, I, I think you helped me some, but it's still that's some fog out there. I'm, 
Stuart, let me come back to you. Let me go ahead with the council. Oh, yeah. I don't think I can uh, add anything else to uh, what's already been said. I do have a, uh, um, a concern to know about this appeals court case, whether it's relevant to what we're talking about here or whether it's not. And so I would like to uh, move that we defer this one meeting and give our legal counsel time to research that and report back to us so we we know exactly what we're dealing with. Second. A motion, second. Stuart, do you want to say something? Um, I'd like to support the motion to defer, but I'd also like to uh, to get a staff analysis a little bit more on the, the phrase that that's in here. Must first determine that the conversion will not result in a greater negative impact on the adjacent properties. I do think that's pretty broad and vague, and, and that may be all over the place in BZA stuff. That may be about what we usually get, but I would like to. That's not an uncommon um, uh, measurement for non-conforming use change. Um, it, it's usually, sometimes the BZA can hear cases where a non-conforming use is changing to another non-conforming use, and the BZA can approve that, but it can't be that the, the, the new non-conforming use is, has any greater negative impact to the community. So this is, this is an um, analysis that the BZA does in other non-conforming use uh, properties. And uses. I have a, a problem with it uh, because to me it sounds like you, you're going to have a hearing where people are going to come because they like the sign or they don't like the sign. Maybe they go to the church that's advertising itself and they're all for it, but they, they don't like a certain business. That's at. To me, it, it smacks of, of simply having a... Um, popularity contest about a business's um, right to do business with, with no firm standards when you're talking about the same use and just different messages and different ways of promoting a message. I don't know, I, I'm, but I do support the motion to defer so that we can think a little bit more about whether we'd be doing Jude, something. let me ask one question for him. What's the, um, when this turns, how often is this every 30 seconds or every minute? Or? It's the, uh, the zoning code uh, only allows eight, every eight seconds. So you can't do it more often than once every eight seconds. So they're, and they could change the uh, sign, um, say a stationary sign, one face sign could stay there for a week and be changed every week or every day or every yeah, 30 days. You could change days. it every hour if you wanted. You just have okay. to go get your permit. So a, a, a permanent sign, you could change every eight seconds if you could do it that fast. <laughs> and here you're doing it mechanically, right? That's correct. Okay. Judy? The only question I had, and thank you, was about the mechanics. Mm -hmm. So we're assuming that all of the tri-fold billboards turn this way. What about the new technology that's coming down the pike where they're going to change like a, Ru 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 a Rubik's Cube? They, you know, um, the, and those uh, that change from the top down. Yeah. The, um, our code requires the change to be instantaneous. And the only place you would be able to do that type of sign is a, a zoning district called Commercial Amusement. And the only place that is is in uh, Opryland. So you could do, you were talking the last time we talked about this way back in November, the, those uh, scrolling signs, they'd only be allowed in the CA district and any sign that took time to change would only be allowed in the CA district and that's only, uh, that property only can be found in the Opryland area. Okay. That's only district. And I understand the sign yeah. you're talking about, but also back to this trifle mm -hmm. sign that's going this way with yeah. each one of those panels. So, but instead of going this way, the panels change. So they, this wouldn't be allowed. If, if they change instantaneously, uh -huh. all at the same time, uh -huh. then, and I, I think that that would be permitted under a code, and they'd have to be static for eight seconds, and they could all change together at eight sec, after eight seconds. That might be a sign that's permitted. I would have to see it, because I'm not quite sure what you're, what, what you're referring to. It may to. not be invented yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, copyright. Um, I'm going to copyright that one. Okay. Yeah. We've got but it, it has to meet those requirements to be a permitted sign outside of the CA zoning district. Mm -hmm. I've got a motion second to defer one meeting to give the uh, our legal counsel time to determine if the uh, judgment or the um, 
Yes. Johnson City, that pertains to this. Is uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is deferred one meeting. We're now ready for item number four, which is rezoning on Osceola. I think I think it was sent to Bob. I think didn't you send? We all have it. I think Bob had forwarded it earlier today. We'll make sure you have it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get our attorney <laughs> to get it to you. Because <laughs> he certainly has come. Ready? Okay. Item four is a request to rezone properties located on Osceola Avenue. Properties are outlined in red. This is in West Nashville. White Bridge Road is just to the east uh, along here. Uh, this is near Sprints, which is just to the north. And the Animal uh, Nashville, Nashville Animal Association or uh, Humane Association um, just to the north as well in Osceola. So, uh, the request consists of four properties, which is a little under an acre. It's a request to rezone from residential to commercial. Staff is recommending disapproval. The current zoning is R6, which permits single two-family residential. The proposed zoning is commercial services, which permits a variety of uh, commercial uses, including retail, restaurants, banks, office, light manufacturing, as well as mini storage. This is in the West Nashville Community Plan. The policy was recently updated and approved by the commission. Uh, the policy is suburban neighborhood evolving. The policy recognizes and supports the evolving residential character of the area and supports residential development. The proposed commercial service district is not consistent with the policy, so staff is recommending disapproval. Uh, the next two slides identifies the dividing line between the residential areas, area which is south and west of the red line, and the, surra and the surrounding non-residential area north and east of the red line. Uh, there are non-residential districts and uses along Osceola north of the line. However, the character of the area noticeably changes to residential south of the line. Here's another shot. Um, not only is there a noticeable change in character, but an, but an alley outlined in yellow provides a physical separation from the subject properties and the adjacent residential area. The next several slides contains images which demonstrate the residential character of the area in the residential policy. This is looking at the property. This outlined in red. Another view. This is another view. And um, the area right across the street outlined in yellow. These are those homes directly across. Uh, this shows uh, Osceola looking north down Osceola south of the site. You see where the man is on the, on the map below that indicates where this is taken from. And this is looking south down Osceola north of the site. As you can see, the character of the area supports the residential policy. Um, I drove through that uh, through there when I first came. Um, we got this, and I haven't I wasn't familiar with this area, but um, I was pleasantly surprised to find that it's actually a quaint little neighborhood. That's there's um, new houses, there's old houses, and there's been a lot of investment made in a lot of the homes. Now, permitting commercial commercial zoning to turn the corner here could negatively impact the neighborhoods, starting a process of incremental erosion of the area's residential character. Currently, there is a noticeable dividing line between the two areas, and once that line is crossed, then it will be difficult to redraw. So staff is recommending disapproval as the request is not consistent with the policy, and the district could negatively impact the existing residential neighborhood. Thank you. This item is open for public hearing. The applicant will be allowed 10 minutes, and you can reserve two minutes for rebuttal if you would like. Mr. Chairman, I, I will take advantage of the rebuttal opportunity. My name is Sean Henry. Uh, I represent the property owners. Uh, my address is 315 Dedrick Street. Appreciate you, Mr. Swigert, leaving the aerial photo up. If, if I could just draw your attention to the commercial block that we're talking about. Just north of the slide is Lenox Avenue. Uh, this commercial block, which I'll refer to as the Sprint's Furniture Block, is bounded on the north by Lenox Avenue. To the right is White Bridge Road. To the left is, is Osceola. And on the south side is, uh, is Burgess. Uh, that whole Sprint's Furniture Commercial Block area is about 10 acres. 
and the subject property that we're talking about is, is roughly an acre, so roughly 10% of that entire uh, Sprint's block. The frontage of that block is about 3,000 feet, 3,000 lineal feet of frontage uh, for that entire Sprint's block. Uh, and so 85% of that existing block face uh, is commercially zoned. And so uh, we, we believe, my clients believe that that the difficulty in this property being part of the emerging neighborhood to the west and to the southwest is the fact that you've got these two alleys on the north side of the property and the east side of the property that are used for commercial purposes. These, these alleys are serving commercial vehicles, commercial uh, trucks uh, for refuge and, and uh, supply to the furniture business and the other businesses in that area. Directly to the east of the subject property on the corner of Whitebridge Road and Burgess is a, is a gas station, and I believe that gas station is open 24 hours. So the, the policy for uh, the emerging neighborhood, uh, we certainly aren't, aren't diminishing that in any way. In fact, there's been new development, new investment uh, in the immediate area. But this particular property has been vacant at least since 2006. I think that's when the last home was removed from the, one of the four parcels here. So it's in a no man's land, and we frankly don't believe that it'll, it will ever develop for residential purposes. So uh, we believe the commercial zoning would be the appropriate way to, uh, to allow this property to develop. Uh, again, with its proximity uh, and location and orientation with uh, the, the properties that adjoin it on the north side and the east side. So with that, I'll conclude my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, my name is Carl Dreyfus. I am a broker with Car Commercial, which is located in that area at uh, Osceola and Charlotte. I have been involved with this property since 2006, representing the owners. Uh, in light of their request to change the zoning from a residential to commercial, uh, one of the things that I did recently was canvass the neighborhood on a door-to-door -door basis to uh, assess what the neighbors felt. After all, my office, and I've worked in that area for 10 years now, everybody wants to be a good neighbor. I think that you've received in your packet a series of uh, nine letters from property owners in that area. Uh, I have prepared, if you would like, I have a map of those to give you more of a visual presentation. Did you have staff just pass those out? Pass those out. As you can tell from the letters that you've received, the response actually has been rather good to supporting a change in that zoning because as it's been said, it has been vacant since 2006. Most people would like to see a change. Uh, we have had zero interest in doing anything residential despite our best efforts for the reasons that have already been presented. So I'm strictly here informationally to share with you the letters and those few comments. Thank you very much for your time. Anyone else wish to speak in support? My name is Janice Tomlinson. I own the property across Burgess Avenue from the subject property. And what pictures of the neighborhood can't show is the amount of traffic that cuts through to avoid the light at White Bridge Road that doesn't feel like a quaint residential area because of all the traffic that comes right through there. The new houses that have gone up are not around this intersection. They're back over in the neighborhood where there's not so much traffic. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in support? Yes. Anyone else in support? Seeing none, anyone in opposition? I'm not turning it commercial, right? And I'm new at this, I'm sorry. That's all right, just give us your name, your address, and um, got two minutes. Beth Gaddis, 119 Osceola Avenue. And from my property, I can see that property. And like she said, the traffic that is already there is unreal. I mean, 
we're almost getting hit regardless when we come, people passing through. Even the city buses come through, which is, you know, what it is. But we don't have sidewalks. The street, Burgess, and even Osceola, the, Burgess is not even wide enough to fit two cars on at one time. You have to literally <coughs> stop to let one go around while the other one does. It's already a horrific intersection, and I don't think turning it commercial would be the best for our neighborhood. Um, there's residential around already, and it doesn't seem, to me, it would be better to be left as a plain lot than to put something as a business in. Or And once it goes commercial, there's no telling what can go in there, and we have no say right after. I mean, it, we have the animal shelter down there, and I have two animals that made their way down the street and um, that we've rescued. But um, we have lots of viral cats over there. We have lots of things. And I'm just worried what will go in there that will impact our neighborhood. So that's all I have to say. And my daughter, you know, we can't get out and walk much. We don't have sidewalks. And it's already a dangerous. And I just think putting more traffic in there would not be a positive. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else speaking in opposition? <coughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is David Cotton. My wife Holly and I and our two small children live at 209 Osceola. Uh, I don't know if you have the same map they sent us. That would be the plot that's numbered 007. <laughs> On the graph that was just up, on that outline, the red, the residential, we be right in the corner. We're essentially right across from Xander's insurance. We've been there since, I believe, 1997. Um, we live in a mixed neighborhood. I don't want you to think I'm a knee-jerk kind of person. I believe in property rights. I understand it's been vacant. I'm not against completely development. I might be different if this had been a smaller commercial. My main concern is this seems to be a really large leap from residential to full commercial services. I'm no expert on zoning, I'm first say that, but it does seem that that's going to open the door for a lot of things that are not going to match. You had a, apparently one of my neighbors come in, just mentioned the animal shelter. We were there before the shelter, the shelter came in. It has come with some nuisances. There's a little bit of extra noise, the animal thing. It, traffic is the big one. It, that cannot be stressed enough. You have a very small street with no sidewalks with a heavy amount of pedestrian traffic. Traffic went up enormously when the shelter came in. However, I will say, in the characteristics of the businesses right around me, I'm the first one to say, the parking lot of Xander's is not the most beautiful neighborhood view for our family, but in light of good neighbors, you've got businesses, Xander's and the shelter, they provide services to the community, they run normal business operating hours, and their clientele is not something I worry about, other than the traffic. What I'm afraid of is if, if this goes all the way to commercial service, that throws the doors open to a number of things. Is that my time up? Thank you. <laughs> uh, you give me a little more time, or I mean, I could wrap it up, or is that it? No, we two minutes. Okay. That's it? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Well, could I ask just for 30 more seconds? Yes, sir. All right. I do want to address this because I do think this is the photos and everything can be misleading. The Metro school bus picks up children right there at the corner of that alley that someone has already pointed out. As far as the letters that came, you know, I, those letters I don't believe were written by residents. I think we are maybe the only homeowner residents around there. It's a heavily immigrant population. I'm not sure about citizens. That I'm, just say they have concerns, many of them have children. I'm not sure it would have been real easy for them to not sign it. I would think that in consideration of this big leap, okay. office Thank residential, you. you know. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? Hello, my name is Kyle Miller. I live at 125 DeMoss Avenue, which is just uh, south of the map as shown. However, uh, the Burgess-Osceola intersection 
is the only way into the neighborhood, and I support the planning commission's desire to uh, retain this property as an R6 and not CS. And it, it uh, uh, and supporting everybody else that says Burgess, the street cannot handle the traffic as it is for a residential neighborhood. Uh, I, if there would have to be significant changes if it were to be commercial. But I support the Planning Commission's desire to keep this neighborhood. And I, I spoke with several homeowners that live in the neighborhood today and who were unable to attend because they're working, uh, who agree that they'd like to see it remain residential. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? Seeing none, the um, applicant have two minutes for rebuttal. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll just be very brief. We just, my client just does not uh, believe as the property owners that it's practical to develop this property as residential. Um, we, we certainly think the Commercial Services District is going to provide a consistent development opportunity as the adjacent neighbors that presently enjoy the CS zoning and the commercial PUD overlay for that for that property. With that, we appreciate your courtesies. Thank you. Thank you. So, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Motion to second close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Derek, um, as I have reviewed the staff report, and I'm glad that they provided an aerial, thank you, an aerial photo for me because that gives me a, a better idea of some of the issues and concerns that were uh, broached during the uh, uh, during the time that uh, the individuals living in this area uh, spoke on it. And uh, looking at it and looking at the community character, uh, looking at the traffic issues that do indeed cause me some concerns and the lack of, of sidewalks and also the fact that, you know, although there is commercial in the area, I do believe that uh, if we were to change the uh, zoning on this, mm -hmm. that uh, it would indeed uh, appear as if it's encroaching on the surrounding <coughs> neighborhood, in my opinion. Consequently, I am going to uh, vote for staff's recommendations uh, on this particular piece of property. And uh, again, uh, when I look at the just the safety issues of the roadways, lack of sidewalks and things of that nature, that does indeed cause me uh, some major concern overall. So I will be voting for staff's recommendation. Greg. <coughs> well, uh, I see both sides of the issue. While I um, I see that it, it is a 80% uh, commercial, um, I also understand that, you know, uh, or I think, is it 80% commercial? Is that what testimony had said? Um, or a majority commercial. Um, but then I also understand um, the neighbor's concerns too. Um, and I think, for me, um, CS seems um, just a zoning plan without something actually going in seems to um, kind of frighten the neighbors. And I understand that. Um, there might be a better transitional zoning there or a, or a PUD or something that, that they can communicate with the neighbors maybe. Um, so I, I think I'm kind of in the middle, <laughs> if that makes sense, um, because I think that the prop, I always like to, my personal philosophy, um, I guess, is that uh, I hate to see the, the, the land not being used. Um, I hate to see it not on the tax rolls. And I hate to see a vacant piece of property because um, a vacant piece of property uh, can lead to all sorts of problems and issues. So I, I don't know if um, the neighbors and the client can get together, but uh, I'm going to have to to vote against um, the the zoning request as as given. Stuart, I agree with my colleagues. I think uh, they're exactly right about several of these points. Also, uh, I, I certainly sympathize with any property owner who's not been able to do something with the property. I think that may be more a function of the last few years 
I'm not sure what, what CS would have been like the last few years. I think there's a lot of room for residential development in mixed areas like this that are close to bus lines. Um, I live in a very high density area that's mixed use. It's, uh, it goes and comes with the economy, but I agree that CS is probably just too stark a commercial use, and I think it's only a matter of time before this, this area does develop residentially. It, it's sad for property owners who are paying taxes but don't, don't have a return on their investment, but that's really not a planning issue for us at this point. So I'll be supporting the staff recommendation. Judy? Uh, I, too, think that the CS um, zoning uh, would negatively impact the community. I'm sorry. I'm one of those that cuts through there. <laughs> and <laughs> there's not, it's not a lot of room. And I've run into that school bus. Well, I didn't run into it. <laughs> but I was there with the school bus. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just trying to see uh, more delivery trucks and, and that kind of thing on this street. Um, I think would just be a negative impact. But let me ask you something, uh, however. Uh, I'm just a, a little bit confused. On uh, the, the lots uh, number 026027, those coming down um, to the north there. Ooh. North or south of the property? Right, right, right behind the property. Right there. On White Bridge. Um, yeah. So is that, that's all, is that the gas station, all that? that Correct, that's, that's commercial. Uh -huh. This, this spot right here, yeah, right all of that. on the corner, that's commercial. Yeah, that is a gas station. Yeah, yeah that's okay, the that's BP. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then uh, the other CS under the black um, box there. Let me go back to a. Yeah. What? That's the human. Oh, that's the human. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's CL. Mm -hmm. CL. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think they probably have enough commercial out here. Thank you. Those are my comments. Phil. Yeah. Would you give us uh, three or four examples of mm -hmm. what could be? Mm -hmm. Give us examples of what could be built in the CS uh, if this were to take place. Well, the CS, it's a little under an acre. You get, it's got a 0 0.64 area uh, ratio, and it's um, about a little over 23,000 square feet is what the maximum floor area would be on this property, or these four properties. So, I mean, you're looking at um, pawn shops, uh, convenient mart, just like the fuel station that's on White Bridge, um, retail, fast food restaurants. Um, it, really, it really runs a long and large, uh, numerous uses, retail. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know, uh, it's, this may not be the proper time to even ask this, but uh, would uh, the street conditions have to be changed? In other words, the street widened and um, sidewalks put in if this were to become CS, would there be requirements there from public works to take if, care of that? If it came in for a permit, if it was zoned to commercial and they came in for a permit, it would be looked at by public works at that time and they may, they can require a traffic impact study, which if they, if that, shows that they need to do improvements and they could require them at that time but with at this stage that hasn't been done because we don't know what's you know right. what's going to go there well i, I think that's my see. biggest problem we don't know what's going to go there and uh that that uh, really really bothers me uh, i know when uh, i was in serving in council if somebody just came and said let's change the property i, I couldn't go that route until i knew something was you know what, what was going to be happening so i'd have to be against this in this case too Council, um, do what is uh, what kind of business is on plot 027 and 029? Does anybody know? Figure out where exactly those are. Right? Is that from the gas station? Okay. Uh, you know. Um, That uh, that forms a little notch in a commercial um, area, and realistically, I don't I don't see people wanting to live next door to a gas station. But the CS zoning is a leap. Uh, if we were talking about CL, I might be more comfortable with that. Uh, obviously you can't talk about an SP because you don't there's no proposal to go there but to um, to do a full-blown CS zoning on an area where there is no 
nothing that's proposed or, or uh, apparently uh, being uh, looked at. I just, uh, I don't know, I'm, that really makes, I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm not particularly impressed with the, uh, the letters that we have since none of them are immediately adjacent to where this property are. They're all down the street or away. So none of those folks across the street or around that Burgess uh, uh, Osceola corner have weighed in on this. So I, I, um, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm really uh, conflicted here. Make a motion. Yes, go ahead. I move that we approve staff's recommendation to disapprove. Second. A motion second to uh, go with staff recommendations. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We're now ready for uh, Phil. If you got something from the uh, Parks Board, would you like to share with us? Uh, the other thing we have would be uh, our next meeting coming up on the uh, 6th of March. It'll be the same day as uh, Election Day. And that's all I have. Thank you. Just, just one thing on that, because I think it came in on the workshop today. The chairman requested, and we'll make that just as a member of the Parks Commission, a presentation by the Parks um, staff on the master plan for Centennial Park. And I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Some, sometime in the future yes. for a work yeah. session or immediately after our meeting. Uh, anything from the council you'd like to share with us? Uh, we did uh, a very short agenda on Tuesday night. Uh, the um, county court clerk uh, item took uh, as much time as uh, the resolution readings did. <laughs> and uh, we did um, send a letter. I uh, introduced or was going to introduce a late filed resolution uh, to go to the state legislature. Uh, it failed because of uh, objections, but I did have uh, the resolution in letter format and invited members to sign on with me, and we did send a letter to the uh, Speaker of the House and mm -hmm. Speaker of the Senate uh, indicating that the council uh, was not in favor of uh, the three bills that I uh, made all of you aware of dealing with uh, property rights and non-conforming and the limitations that that would place on planning organizations to do their job uh, in planning and zoning uh, matters. So um, that's, uh, that's really about it. And the executive committee will be meeting Tuesday morning at 830. If anybody would like to attend that, and that's public notice also. Uh, executive director report. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the ULI sustainability luncheon is scheduled on March 8th. I think most of y'all have been notified. I think uh, Kelly's checked with you, but uh, that'll be at 1130 at the Davidson Room. And again, uh, Shadu Johnson, who's the deputy city manager of Vancouver, British Columbia, is going to be here to talk about sustainability and some of the efforts. Um, Jennifer Higgs is serving now on the steering committee for the there's going to be a new Nashville.gov website, and she's uh, um, serving on that to help that out. Um, one heads up, and we'll get this out to you in an email. Um, on March 14th, there's another APA webcast. It'll be Wednesday, March 18th at 3 o'clock, and the subject of that is going to be urban agriculture and food systems planning. So, and that's um, a continuing education, right. hour and a half, so right. urgent to attend that. Right. It's on uh, March 14th, Wednesday. March 14th. We'll send out a three o'clock. Three o'clock. Right. It's, it's a, oh, have you? Okay. All right. It's Sorry. A, it's a real uh, interesting subject too. That uh, yeah. Um, just on ongoing things, the Midtown plan, we had the workshop today, and that will be presented to you on March 22nd. Uh, the Antioch plan update is underway. I think uh, Tiffany um, has um, been in touch with, if she hasn't uh, been in touch with you, she will, to try to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and, and kind of uh, get, as we start that process on that, that update. Um, we do have a new Antioch page, web page. It uh, goes up today. If it's up, it should be up right now. Um, we do have an Antioch specific email list. So far, we've got over 120 people that have requested um, uh, on that list. Um, we do have a short video on the web page. We did a um, 
focus group with high school students um, at Hickory Hollow on the plan, and so that's up on the web page, and we're just providing news information on that. Um, we are working on Earth Day planning with a number of other departments in Metro and working that, and uh, continuing to work on the um, satellite um, sighting of OE, uh, EOC stations. So. Um, I think that's pretty much all that I have. Question. Uh, when you say Antioch, does that include Cane Ridge area? This one, does, that's in the southeast, Cane Ridge. Yes. It, basically, it basically is Hickory Hollow North. They'll both uh, be studied. Right, they're both being, a, their sensitivity there, I just first. wondered. Yes, we're very, yeah. <laughs> Antioch is in the southeast is that the right study way to area. Put it? Okay. Correct. Antioch's in the southeast study. Yeah, they're, they're Phil, they're both going to be studied, but Antioch's first and then the southeast immediately following that. So, Any other comments from any of the other commissioners that uh, help us along our endeavors? <laughs> Adjourn. Good job.